Hi, this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to crochet the fluffy diamond pillow that you can see right here. This is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com that's also available as an ad-free PDF. To make this pattern, we're using two separate yarns that really creates this gorgeous texture. The other side is left plain, so you've got a double-sided pillow for two different looks. Let's go ahead and talk about the fluffy diamond pillow. To make the fluffy diamond pillow, we use two yarns, Bernat Blanket, which forms the base of the pillow, and then Bernat Sheepy, which we use to create this texture here and to seam up all four sides of our pillow. You'll also need a USL 8mm crochet hook, your standard crochet supplies of course, a yarn needle, scissors, and some stitch markers, probably a bigger yarn needle than this for this yarn. And of course, you will need a pillow form to put inside your pillow. Now, the interior pocket of this pillow is about 16 inches square. It's a little bit bigger once you've got it seamed, closer to 17 inches. But I then recommend using an 18 inch pillow form. I like to go a little bit big in my pillow form. So you can see this is a really incredibly fluffy, really nicely firm pillow. If you like yours a little thinner, then you can drop down to a 16 inch by 16 inch. But by going a little bit oversized in the pillow form, I find I get a really nice, lovely, super fluffy pillow this way. Now let's take a closer look at the actual pattern that we're doing right here on the front of our fluffy diamond pillow. So here's a close up of that fluffy diamond pillow side. If I pull apart the little cables here, you can see there's our Bernat blanket underneath. And the back of the pillow, as you can see here, is just standard rows of double crochet and single crochet alternating to make a square. Here on the front is where sort of the action happens. And here is a small swatch of what's happening underneath all that shapey. This is more Bernat blanket in a color, so it's a little bit easier to see, but you can see we create this diamond trellis pattern. Now I've used this pattern and essentially made this pillow already in a different yarn, the Huga Diamond Pillow Tutorial, that's Huga spelled H-Y-G-G-E, shows you how to create this diamond trellis pattern for this pillow. Now, because we're using Bernat Blanket instead of the much thinner yarn we used for that pattern, we start out with only 35 stitches, but the stitch pattern itself is exactly the same for the front and the back. That's when we're making the big squares that we join together for, to make the pillow. After we have made those squares though, we have one other step here that we wanna do with our Bernat Sheepy before we join the two squares together to make our pillow. So here we have a small swatch of the front of our pillow, the side with the diamonds worked in it. Again, if you need a tutorial for how to make this pattern, you'll want to look at the Huga Diamond Pillow tutorial, which is linked at the link in the description. After we've made our two pieces, we've got our back, which is just plain stitches, and our front with the diamonds on it, that's when we come in with the sheepy. So in our original, of course, I used two shades of off-white, but I'm using a couple of different colors here to make it a little easier to see. And of course, you can use whichever colors you like. So adding the sheepy is quite simple. You just wanna pick any random spot on your pillow to go ahead and start adding these stitches. Then we're going to join with either a slip stitch or you can join with a single crochet, whichever you prefer. Let's go ahead and join with a single crochet. I'm going to twist my yarn just a little bit here so that I can drop that loop on my hook. And when I hold onto the tail, you can see the tail crosses in front of the other yarn here on our hook. Then I'm just going to pick a spot and it doesn't matter which direction you come from. It's completely arbitrary. Let's go ahead and just start right there in a corner. That seems nice and easy. What we're going to do is we're going to be working around these cables, just working single crochets right over the whole cable itself. And we want to put three single crochets around each little section here. So there'd be one section, another section, basically around each of these stitches. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to start right at the top of this one, insert my hook, yarn over and pull up my loop, and yarn over and pull through both of those loops for my first single crochet. Then I can weave in this end when I'm all done. I'm gonna pull this over to the side a little bit and then I'm just going to go right around that post again. You can see I'm just picking up that cable away from the rest of my fabric and make a second single crochet around that one. We do one more. And as you can see, there we go, straighten that out. That post is pretty well covered. So now we've come to a point where we've got those posts crossing over each other. So we're simply going to chain one. 
jump right over that next row and we're going to want to try and continue sort of that straight line. So we chained one to skip over this section. Then we just come right down to that next stitch in the line here and work three single crochets right around that post. See there, I'm putting my hook right underneath that post and just covering it right on up with single crochet stitches. That was three, so we've come to another little section here before we can continue, so I want to chain one again. Chain one, just jump right on over that and come to the next one. Like I say, it doesn't really matter where you begin. You just wanna keep working until you've covered all of those posts. So now you can see I've done one full line here all the way across. Of course, on a bigger pillow, this would be a much longer line, but I've come down here to the bottom. Now, if I ended up somewhere like this where it isn't connected to another line, I would need to finish off and rejoin somewhere else. But I've got another line heading up right here. So I'm going to chain one again, sort of to create like a, almost like a little corner, and then I'm just going to go ahead and turn my work. And now I can start working up this one. So we'll do three around this post, one, now I need to pull up a little bit more yarn here from my sheepy. But this is such a great way to work with sheepy because we don't have to work back into these stitches at all. You can see with this yarn, it can be quite see hard to see your individual stitches, but that's not a problem at all. We're just making single crochets right around those posts. So there's three, if we lay that out, you can see we've come up there. We've come to another corner, so we're going to chain one again, just to give us a little extra move to room to move around this corner and keep our stitches laying nicely and now we can head up this post right here and again we just want to put three single crochets right around each one of those posts that's what I found covers them up really nicely if you are making your pillow and you say gosh for whatever reason the yarn I used or just my gauge two does it or maybe I need four that's fine it's arbitrary it's just enough to cover up that post Anytime we come to another row here, we need to chain one again so we can jump over it and come to that next section with three more. So there's one, two, we straighten out that yarn, there we go, and three. And then every time we finish one, we can just lay it out and see where we're at. We've come all the way to this edge, but we've got another one right here. So let's do this one together so we can do sort of a cross over here so you can see what happens when we need to jump over a previous line of sheepy. Now we're at a corner, so I want to chain one and turn and go down this next post. So there's one, two, and three. There we are, looking good, but now when we come to this cross section here, you can see there's already a line of sheepy there. But we just do the same thing. We chain one, and that gives us just enough to push that out of the way and jump right on over it to the other side here. And then we can just continue crocheting right around those posts. And that is really the secret to all that texture. We're just going back and forth over those posts. You can see there's another line there. It's going to cross there. And then if we come up in here, we will have done all the posts here on our little sample. But that's essentially all we're doing. We're going back and forth. Every time we hit a corner, we chain one and go around again. So once you've got all these posts covered with your sheepy, then it's time to join your two pieces together and make your final seam all the way around. Now, after you've got your front made and all the sheepy put on, I didn't quite finish our sample here, but you get the idea, and you've got your back made in your plain stitches, probably in the same color though, you're going to want to go ahead and use your stitch markers to match up the sides and the bottom and top of both of those pieces. It doesn't really matter if the back's going the same direction as the front, we just wanna make sure that all those pieces match up together. Remember that back is just alternating double crochet and single crochet rows so that the base of it without the cables is kind of the same on both sides. So you can go ahead and count out those stitches and get them matched up really nicely along all the sides and along the top and the bottom. But remember, as you make that seam, you're going to leave one side open and insert the pillow before you finish up that final seam. So working those seams together is really simple. We're basically just crocheting through both layers. And I like to use the sheepy again to create a really nice, beautiful edge for this pillow. But if you'd prefer, you can use the Bernat blanket.
However, one little extra trip that I wanted to show that I did with this particular pattern when I was joining these two sides together here. Let me go ahead and get this stitch marker out of the way now. It's a little tight there. But basically, we're just going to crochet through A through both of those layers. So you can do it with a slip stitch or join again with a single crochet if you like, but it's just single crochets. Work through both layers here. And we're just going to work our way all the way across. But when you get to the point where we've got one of these little points of our diamonds, if you will, sticking out near the edge, you can see on this one, we're getting really close to this one right here. There's that little chain one space as we turn that corner. This is something you kind of have to use your, your own visual judgment for. It looks like it's not so much below this next stitch, but maybe the stitch after that. So I'll go ahead and just crochet through both of these layers to join this one. And then on this next one, rather than just going straight into that next stitch, what I like to do is actually send my hook under that chain one space and then through both of those layers and pull that loop all the way through those layers and up through that chain space and give it a little extra tug so it can come back here so it's not all cut up in here and then finish the single crochet. And then I'll go back to just crocheting through both layers until I would get to another point where normally I would have another point of that right there. And what that does, we can see it here on the finished pillow a little better, but when we do that, it just connects those edge, the edges of that diamond to the edge or the seam around the edges, and it creates a little bit more finished look, so there's not a separation there. It looks a little bit more intentional. But as I say, we just crochet around three of those sides, and when there's one side left, you wanna shove the pillow in there, crochet up the final side, and then just weave in your ends. And that's how to crochet the fluffy diamond pillow. Remember, you can find this pattern free on mooglyblog.com. Just search for fluffy diamond pillow, and I'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.